as we as we mentioned, nearly seven million folks have already received the J&J shot. A lot of folks probably worried about themselves, friends or family members. So let's bring in Dr. John Torres to help us break down what all this means. Dr. John, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, so we've heard all about Get the vaccine. Mm -hmm. The best one you can get is the one that's available. So now you've got these J&J &J vaccine trials that have happened. Did those clotting cases appear in any of the trials? But more importantly, folks are going to be wondering, mm -hmm. is this vaccine safe? And Al, I totally get it. The folks are going to be concerned about the vaccine. These did not show up in the trials. And even now, there's only a casual link between the blood clotting and the actual vaccines itself. And like Miguel talked about, there are six women, all between the ages of 18 and 48, and they all got these clots within two weeks of getting the vaccine. But the concern is these are rare clots to begin with. And the fact that they got the vaccine, these clots happen, again, no, they can't make a direct link, but they just want to make sure that that link is not there. So they're slowing down on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine right now, putting a halt on it for a little bit while they look into it. One of the big reasons they're doing this, and I think this is important to understand, is because they want to make sure the message gets out to doctors. This is a clot that's so rare that as doctors, we typically treat these clots in one fashion with a certain medicine called heparin. What they want us to do is not treat this one with heparin, treat it somewhere else. So on one indication, this is a message going out to doctors more than it is going out to the general public. But at the same time, they want to make sure in that overabundance of caution that it's safe to restart the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. They're going to be looking at that probably later today and tomorrow. My guess is there'll be some kind of labeling change, mm -hmm. and they'll go ahead and restart the vaccine with just the understanding of what people need to look for in case they do get the shot and they do have any kind of reactions. So there are a couple of questions. If I'm a viewer and I'm sitting at home right now and I've just received the J&J &J shot, should I be paranoid? And second of all, you talk about who's most at risk. Dylan and I fall right into the category that you just mentioned. So I think there are a lot of people who will be afraid, quite frankly, especially if you're in our demo, to get that vaccination. And I understand that because when you hear things like that, that does give you a bit of a pause going, you know, should I be getting this vaccination? But if you put the numbers, if you look at it statistically, 99.999% of people had no issues with this. One out of a million people ended up getting a reaction to this. And again, they can't even really relate the two. They're going to look at it to make sure that that relation is not there. But what they did come out with was some information for people who had gotten the vaccine. They said if within three weeks of getting the vaccine, if you develop a severe headache of abdominal pain, mm -hmm. leg pain, or shortness of breath, then you want to see your doctor and let them know you got the vaccine so they can look at you and see if this is a big issue. But again, you know, I can't overemphasize this. It's very rare to happen. The FDA has done what the FDA needs to do, and they put a pause on it at this point so they can look at the data and see what's going on with that data and then make sure there's no connection. And then when they restart it, they might restart it with some other indications saying, you know, only certain people should be getting it, or if you get it, look for these indications. But it is still a safe vaccine. But uh, Dr. John, you know, someone very, very close to me, got the J&J &J vaccine, I'd say probably closer to a month ago. So would she be in the clear now or should she still be looking for those signs? Do the risks go away after, say, three weeks? And the, again, the women who had it, this is very low number, so it's very hard to, to look at the data and say this is the absolute, but the women that had it all had it within 13 days. The FDA is saying look for these symptoms within three weeks. Once you get past that three-week period, you can go ahead and say, okay, I probably am not in that time period where I need to be concerned with it. But like I tell people all the time, you know yourself better than anybody mm -hmm. else. If you start having these issues, simply get a hold of your doctor and say, is this something I need to be worried about? So, so Dr. John, so now we have this pause. So how long do you think the pause will last? When will J&J &J vaccinations resume? And what is this going to do to the rate of vaccinations in this country? We've been doing really well, but I would imagine this puts a crimp in things. And we have been doing really well, but the bulk majority of the vaccines have been Pfizer and Moderna. J&J, &J, like Miguel said, 7 million, almost 7 million have been given out. 9 million have been shipped out. They promised 100 million by the end of May, so that's going to be a big surge in vaccines. My guess is at this point, it's going to cause a little bit of issues, but not a huge issue because it's not the majority of vaccines that are happening out there. But going forward, if they don't restart it, that can cause a bigger problem and can slow down that vaccination rate that we're trying to attain. attain. And hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully they get the vaccine back out there and they start giving it to people once they figure out again that it, it's safe and that connection is not there. But really? is there any time frame, yeah. do you think, you know, as far as, I mean, in something like this, is there an average? 
Usually it happens within a few days or a week or so. They're going to look at the data. They're going to call through the data, make sure that connection is not there. Or if it is there, who specifically is there for and then restart it. And like I mentioned, more than likely they're going to put what we call a label on the vaccine. And that's for whoever's administering the vaccine to caution the people getting it saying, hey, if you start having these symptoms, go ahead and get checked. Or if you're in a certain criteria, you might not need to get this vaccine. You might need to get a different vaccine. But my guess is they'll be doing that over the next week or so. I don't think this is going to be a long pause. Well, that's good okay. to hear. Dr. John Torres, thank you so much for clearing things up. Thank you. You bet. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.